On today's show, Michigan and California fight to be the leaders in autonomy. Reports are swirling that FCA will show off a fully electric version of the Pacifica. And we take you back in time to Henry Ford's secret innovation room. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. Automakers think mobility services represent a whole new business for them to get into. They see a chance to make big money, and that's why we're seeing so much activity in this field. And now Japanese supplier Denso is the latest to jump into that market. It just launched a car sharing program for students at the University of Michigan Dearborn. 30 students will be allowed to access a set of three Ford Focus electric cars. They will reserve a ride via an app, which they can use for running errands, going out with friends, or whatever, as long as they remain in the continental U.S. Denzel will collect the data from the program to see how it can improve car sharing, and it will share the results from the study at the 2017 SAE World Congress. Speaking of Michigan, the state has worked hard to keep itself at the forefront of everything autonomous, and now it's doing even more. New laws just went into action that allow autonomous cars on any road with or without a driver. They also give companies the right to sell vehicles that don't have traditional controls, like a steering wheel or pedals. You know, but I can't help to think how silly it is that Michigan can be so progressive with autonomy, but yet it's only one of four states that has banned Tesla from selling vehicles. But of course, Michigan is doing all this to keep up with or even put itself slightly ahead of California when it comes to autonomy. But the list of companies allowed to test in Cali just got a little bit longer. NVIDIA was given the green light to test its autonomous technology in the state. You'll remember NVIDIA as one of the top companies that makes processors for self-driving vehicles. And it already has its own test vehicle. And this move could also pave yet another way for a Chinese automaker to enter the U.S. market. Baidu was already granted permission to test autonomous vehicles in California, but in September, the automaker formed a partnership with NVIDIA to develop an artificial intelligence platform for self-driving cars. Still to come, Aston Martin is recreating DB4 GTs from the 1950s. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. We've reported how Jaguar Land Rover have brought a few iconic models back to life, the XKSS and Series 1, and now Aston Martin is doing the same. The automaker is going to build a limited run of 25 DB4 GTs. The original car ran from 1959 to 1963, but these continuation models will be based on a lighter weight version of which only eight were originally built. A few changes were made to bring the car into the modern era. Under the hood is a straight six-cylinder engine that produces over 330 horsepower with three Weber carburetors. They also get an FIA-approved roll cage, fire extinguisher, and seat belts. Unfortunately, they will be track-only cars, but something tells me the lucky 25 plunking down $1.9 million for these cars won't mind one bit. As part of its punishment for its diesel emission cheating, Volkswagen agreed to spend $2 billion to improve the EV infrastructure in the U.S., and now the company has laid out a three-stage plan to do so. Starting next year, it will install over 300 Level 2 or DC fast chargers in 15 American metropolitan areas, while at the same time developing a nationwide network of over 200 high-speed charging stations. The second step of the plan calls for, quote, increasing awareness and fostering education about EVs, charging availability, and the benefits of electric mobility, end quote. In California, it will select a city for its Green City Initiative and set up future concepts of sustainable mobility, like EV ride-sharing. The last part allows anyone to chime in 
on VW's Electrify America website that, quote, may help inform investment plans over the next 10 years. The $2 billion will be spread out over 30 investment cycles starting on January 16th of next year. FCA already has a plug-in hybrid version of the new Pacifica, but according to Bloomberg, the company will show off a full electric version of the minivan at the upcoming Consumer Electronics Show. You know, we didn't think FCA could pull off a good plug-in vehicle, but we were surprised at just how good the hybrid Pacifica really is. So there's no reason for us to think that it can't pull off a really good pure electric vehicle too. Bloomberg also says that FCA has an electric Maserati in the works as well. Coming up next, a look at the secret room Henry Ford used to create the Model T. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. On last week's AutoLine After Hours, we got a history lesson about the birthplace of the Model T, the Ford Piquette plant. That's because our special guest was Nancy Darga, the executive director of the Piquette Museum. And in the following clip, she discusses the secret room Henry Ford used to create new innovations. Well, on the third floor in the back of the building near the, oh, railroad, okay. uh, the railroad track, Henry said, let's build some walls and section off an area, and we're going to come up with a new, uh, a better engine. And so he took the N engine from his Model N, and uh, which was a dual block engine, and he came up with a single block. His whole goal was to make an affordable, indestructible, uh, easy to operate, and easy to fix with hand tools motor, which was, which is why I love it when uh, Bob Casey says this is. It started out as evolutionary, but it went revolutionary as soon as he made it affordable and fixable by hand because we were no longer producing for the affluent or the rich. We were now producing for the masses, and that changed the whole dynamic. Rick, because it changed the whole transportation structure all over the world, in the United States and everywhere else. And, uh... But my understanding is they did more than the engine there. That is where the Model T was designed. That's where the Model T was designed, and uh, there was two rooms. One was a drafting room, and the other one, he had his mother's rocking chair and a chalkboard in. We're in the process of, of uh, recreating that room so that people can understand what took place in the room. And um, it, it, it's exciting because it had locking doors and only a few people had a key to it. Hence why you call it the secret, the secret room. Only very few room. people were allowed yeah. in there. And there was more than one experimental room in there, but this was the secret one, you know, that was in there. And Joseph Gollum, who was in a... a a Hungarian engineer from Budapest was the head draftsman in there. I believe Harold Wills was in there. And we understand that Etzel, uh, Etzel went in there after school, so he could come and go as he wanted in the room. So that's, that would be kind of fun to have your kid see your secrets. To learn more about the history behind the Ford Paquette plant, you can watch that entire discussion right now on our website, autoline.tv, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, and please join us again tomorrow for the latest news in the global automotive industry.